Super Chris asks, question, how many t-shirts can you wear at once? Several. Sean Chia asks, any protests you're planning to attend or wish you would have attended? Uh, I have not attended any protests in my adult life. Uh, there was a protest that happened not far from my house shortly after uh, George Floyd that I, I wish I had attended, but I had work and didn't ask off for it. Master Eth asks, well, he didn't really ask, this wasn't actually in response to my call for questions, but he told me to make a video where I rate every single dating app. I have used four dating apps in my life. OkCupid is the worst. It has bad UI, and it you spend most of your time asking questions to fill out your, answering questions rather to fill out your profile. Yeah, it feels more like simulating filling out a form than it does simulating a relationship which it's 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 a bad app bumble it would be my favorite actually except that i have not ever gotten a good match from bumble hinge is not bad but the app itself seems to take itself too seriously um its ui is up there with bumble it's very good it's very clean um it the thing about Hinge is that because the app itself takes itself so seriously, you almost, it, it's a little less fun actually trying to use it, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like I have to engage a lot more when I'm just looking at someone's profile than I do, like, on Tinder. And Tinder, yeah, Tinder sucks. They all suck. Dating apps suck, okay? You're... If you found a good relationship or whatever on a dating app, good for you. But they all suck. T Tinder kind of accepts that it sucks. It charges way less for the premium version of itself than any of the other ones do. Yeah, it sucks, but I've had more interesting conversations with people on Tinder than any of the other apps. So I, I'm going to put it highest. Alyssa asks, if you could have one famous British person in your videos, who would you choose? Probably Matt Smith. Just have Matt Smith, just have him play the doctor in any video. Just have the TARDIS materialize behind me. Matt Smith walks out. Instantly better video. Sorry to the other doctors, I have a favorite. King Waffle Cone asks, favorite Sonic game soundtrack? Probably Sonic Forces. Um, just looking at the soundtrack overall, probably Sonic Forces. Uh, Sonic Adventure 2 has a couple of my favorite songs, but it, I dislike a lot of like the Knuckles level music, aside from Pumpkin Hill, obviously. A lot of Rouge's music all sounds the same. Similar to that Sonic 06 has some great songs, but it also has a lot of awful stuff in it. Um, Sonic Generations is probably a close second but it's cheating because all its songs are remixes of songs from other games. Nia asks, what are the best and worst things about being a ginger? Hashtag ask schmook. First of all, this show is not called hashtag ask schmook. It is called unscripted because while this show is you guys asking me questions and getting to interact with me, the point of this show is not me doing silly things at your whim. The point is creating a vibe. Anyways, the best thing about being a ginger is that I'm just so gosh darn good looking. The worst thing is how do I know people like me for me, you know? How do I know? What if they just like me for my hair? The ads on the TVs at Target asks, Hey, this is extremely specific, but will you do a live stream on November 3rd where you make a tier list of Shmoyoho's songified election videos? That is incredibly weirdly specific, but as it happens, yes, on November 3rd, I'm going to do a live stream. It's going to be, you know, an episode of the sub feed, but it's going to be live where I review and rank every one of Shmoyoho's songified videos related to elections, not just this year's elections. It will be the best election coverage because unlike the major networks, we're going to discuss the real issues. Who sang best? Who gets to run the show? Bagel Gabe asks, 
What is your favorite video from youtube.com slash bagel gabe? Come on, bagel gabe. For one thing, I plugged you in my top 10 YouTubers video and you weren't even on the list of my top 10 YouTubers. Disregarding the one I'm in, because that's too obvious. Um, probably ask Bagel Gabe 2. There's a couple jokes in there that I think are really funny. Um, and honestly, I like live action Gabe better than Lego SpongeBob stuff. And I'm not afraid to say it. Sansanray asks, One thing that men does that annoys you, and one thing that women does that annoys you. I emoji. I don't know. Um, for women specifically, I feel kind of sexist saying that there's any one behavior that annoys me that all women do, you know? Like, one individual woman might get on my nerves, but there's nothing that they all do that annoys me, you know? Um, for men, the thing they do that annoys me is that they, they are constantly the reason that my female friends feel unsafe and uncomfortable and unhappy and I wish that men would stop doing that. Sans Henry asks, what would you do right now if money wasn't a problem? Um, I would make more YouTube videos more consistently. Um, and if you want to make money less of a problem so that I can make more YouTube videos more consistently, go to my Patreon. Thank you. Sans Henry asks, all right, you know what, Susan? Susan, this is not this is not your video, Susan. You don't get to ask three questions and get all of them in the video, okay? You know what? From now on, I'm going to redo my whole Patreon, and I'm going to add getting to ask more than one question on unscripted videos. I'm just going to add that as a reward tier. And you can pay me, and I will answer your third question, Susan. Super Chris, who you'll notice was already in, it, in the video, so again... I'll, I'll let it slide this time, but from now on, Patreon's here, okay? Super Chris asks, If we all uploaded our consciousness to a conglomerate infrastructure, would we be dead or alive? Would we still be of our own mind or become one in thinking? And would we have ghost limbs and or feel other people's ghost limbs? Asking for a friend. Let's break this down. First of all, science cannot take your consciousness and upload it to a computer. You don't say computer, you say uh, conglomerate infrastructure. As far as my understanding of science goes, the best that could be possible is that they could make a copy of your consciousness and put it on a conglomerate infrastructure, right? They can't... They can't take what's in your brain and put that information in there just on its own, it would have to be a copy or a port, right? So it wouldn't really be you. So, the, whether you would be alive or dead would depend entirely on the process of getting this information into the conglomerate infrastructure. If that process kills you, yeah, you're dead. If it doesn't, no, you're alive, but then you also exist in the conglomerate infrastructure. Now, would this version of you in the conglomerate infrastructure, would it be a hive mind? Uh, that depends on how the conglomerate infrastructure works. And would you, and would we feel each other's ghost limbs? Uh, again, that depends on how the conglomerate infrastructure works. If the brains within the infrastructure are linked in some way, yeah, you would be able to understand each other's thoughts and feel each other's ghost limbs and things like that. Of course, that's just how it would work. Uh, if they program it right, no, it won't work like that. It's, unless I'm misunderstanding what conglomerate infrastructure means. Uh, that, that could also be an issue, but I've spent way too much time answering this question. Jonathan Curtin asks, What is your favorite type of pre-film projection or moving image technology, such as zootropes, static image projections, etc.? Mine is magic lanterns. The crystal ball, of course gaze into it you can see your future grace t asks what's a DD &D character you'll never play but think it would be super fun for whatever reason comedy drama epicness etc i don't know that i have an idea for a character 
that I will never play. There are characters I've played. There's a character, but the very first D&D character I came up with was, we weren't actually playing D&D. We were playing a different system that my friend made up uh, and we didn't follow very well because he was constantly changing it as we followed it. And we would just kind of be like, hey Jack, I think the rules should work like this. And he, he didn't stand up to us enough. <laughs> Anyways, the character I played in that campaign was a healer. He was a cleric, but he was a uh, psychotic and a sadist. Um, he wanted the people he was healing to stay alive so that they would be in pain longer. Being in that kind of psychotic headspace and like actively wanting my fellow team members to not do well, it was kind of weird to stay true to that and I probably wouldn't do that now. Um, but I still love the idea of a chaotic evil healer character. I think it's fun, um, but I probably wouldn't play as him again. Chris Howard asks, how do you poof your hair so beautifully? The people must know. Honestly, I take a shower, I put shampoo in it, I rinse it out, and then I'll kind of run a comb through it. And then I'll kind of let the wind mess it up on the way to work, and then I'll straighten it again with my fingers, and it looks like this. Cecilia Bedelia asks, Pets? Coco? Hi. This is Coco. Say hi, Coco. Hi. There's Java. Hi, Java. Hi.